last week how many were here last week how many were blessed by last week's message come on it is important for us to manage our mind because if we want to live in victory if we want to live in uh, if we want to live in God's promises in our life it will manifest and will come through first of all through our mind so it is important for us to manage our mind, our mindsets, manage our thinking because it's through that means that God's going to bring about the blessing and He will take us into that promise, land that He has for you and I. Amen. Do you believe it church? Yeah. So if you've missed last, last Sunday's message, I encourage you to go to YouTube, Facebook, uh, to our social media, listen to it. And not just listen to it once, listen until it gets into your spirit so that you can begin to make appropriate changes in your life so the Holy Spirit begins to scan your mind your mindsets your strongholds the things that you think about continuously and he begins to point out and uproot those wrong kinds of strongholds and mindsets and thoughts and bring it changed through his word in your mind amen church amen 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 today I want to kind of continue in that direction and I wanted to make it a little bit even more practical <clears throat> And I titled my, my message is Possessing Your Promised Land or Your Promise or um, What God Has Given You. Um, and I want to take a read from Exodus chapter 23 verses 29 and 30. And it goes like this. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land becomes desolate and the beasts of the field becomes too numerous for you. Little by little I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you have inherited the land so God is speaking to Israelites that he has brought out of the land of slavery he's brought them out out of Egypt <clears throat> and they are on the way to the promised land they're on the way to the land that flows with milk and, fi uh, milk and honey <laughs> not funny and he's taken them to a place they've been dreaming um, of, the, a place they, they, they've been longing for so long, a, a place that was promised to their great grandfathers. And at, up to this point, it was only a dream, it was only uh, something they hoped for. But right now, they are on the way to that land. They are, they are in the cusp of, 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 of possession, pos uh, uh, taking possession of their land and getting what they were dreaming about. And God kind of lays it out to them and He gives them a practical way of how it's going to happen. And He says that when I'm going to bring you into the land and He promised them this big vast amount of land, uh, not where Israel is occupying right now but the land where even uh, Iran and Iraq and in other surrounding areas occupying this was all supposed to be a land of Israel because it's God promised to them and God lays a plan out for them he says this is the way I'm gonna bring about my promise into your life and this is the way I'm gonna fulfill my word that I've given to your father Abraham and he says the way I'm gonna do it is that as you increase I'm going to begin to give you a new territories. I'm going to give you a new lens as you grow, as you increase so that it doesn't get overrun by the wild beasts and the land becomes desolate and useless. As you increase, you're going to begin to possess that promised land as you grow. Today I want to take out of this principle and take it to, into our personal life and our private life in the area of our marriages in the, in the area of our uh, uh, in the area of our family and children in the area of our business in the area of our uh, calling in the area of our anointing in the area of our ministry any area and every area I believe that the same principle applies to us God unlocks he opens the way for us and he releases his grace and anointing, his gift in our lives as we increase and as we become more able to sustain the grace and the anointing, to sustain the gifting, to sustain the, the pressures and open doors that he uh, gives us, he begins to open it up stage by stage. 
because the further you go in life the higher you go uh, somebody said that the high places are slippery places so therefore in your life you have to be a person that is able to maintain yourself you have to be a person of character you have to be a person that is able to handle high pressure you person is able to handle high responsibilities in order to get be in a place in a position uh, where you have more responsibilities amen and so God has a big promise for us. He has a great destiny for us. He has great things in store for us but He will take us step by step toward it. Yeah. And today I want to I want to discover and I want to kind of talk about kind of my five major steps that I identified for myself that will help us to possess the promised land and, and take over the promise and live in a destiny that God has in store for us. I remember when uh, my dad I was young, I was teen, uh, younger, uh, younger, I'm still young um, and I was uh, age of 14, 15 and God, uh, my dad promised me that he was gonna get me a car when I turned 16. Occasionally here and there he would let me drive, you know, well, not legally but God forgives all sins and um, but the fulfillment of his promise to get me a car was gonna come when I was gonna grow in size and in brains okay we all know teenagers are capable of many things and so the the fulfillment of that promise of having a car was gonna come when I will mature in size when I'm gonna be old enough mature in age and mature in wisdom when I'm gonna reach a certain age that was also be legal for me to have my own car and drive and when I got to that stage he delivered on his promise and that's kind of, kind of how it goes in our, in, our, in our walk with God. There are certain things that God has, has, has promised to us. There are certain things that God has spoken over our life, over our marriage or, or for us to be married. But there are things, there are steps that we must take. There is growth that has to take place in our heart, in our mind, in our character for us, for us to be able to step in into that place and take a possession of it. Amen church? And so God comes to Adam and Eve or he he created them he said be fruitful and multiply increase in numbers one person uh, one translation says fill the earth and have dominion so dominion means having possession having ownership so he gives the earth unto man but he says in order for you to take a complete dominion ownership in order for you to take a possession of it you have to increase you have to grow you have to multiply you have to fill the earth and then you will have a possession meaning dominion okay so i believe the first thing that we must grow in we must increase continue on from me uh, from last sunday message is we have to grow in positive thinking. We have to grow in our ability to think like God, to think according to the Word of God. Because to the degree that we think the thoughts of God is to the same degree we will walk in promises of God. We will walk in the power of God. We will walk in a, in, in a manifestation of His glory and His power. Amen if we think negative thoughts negative thoughts are not thoughts of faith so if we don't have thoughts of faith Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God so the first thing where we need to grow the first thing where we need to increase is we must think like God we must think according to the statutes and principles of God we must think according to the Word of God are you with me church we must think the way God thinks because if we want to operate the way God operates if we want to operate uh, if we want to operate and, and conquer and possess the promise of God we must align ourselves with the promise of God we must think the thoughts of the promise of God we must think positive we must think in the way of God yeah. are you with me church yeah. our thoughts what well, like we talked last Sunday our thoughts like a magnet they either attract the good things of God into our life or they can attract the bad things into our life and our thoughts they create expectation and expectation 
it, it attracts, it brings into our life the things that we're expecting for. And last Sunday I brought multiple examples when expectation, it draws into your life the very, the very thing that you expect. The very thing, if you are fearful, if you have thoughts of fear, for example, if you are if you're in, 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 in business and you're constantly having these thoughts uh, that, oh, um, I can't trust nobody. Uh, you know, people will, people will dupe me. People will cut me out. People will, um, people, uh, you know, something bad will happen. And, and you constantly work in that kind of mindset. You constantly think that way. It eventually will manifest in your life. You will attract that kind of a people that will cut you out. People that will cheat you. The people that won't treat you fair. If that's the same kind of mindset mentality you have in your in a relationship you will you will create an expectation a, a, a ground for that thing to grow and manifest itself if you if you constantly think that you're lonely you constantly think like oh nobody wants me that's constantly what's running through your mind you're creating that kind of an expectation you push good people away from you that actually care for you that constantly actually want to be involved in your life because you constantly expect them you can't expect to be lonely and and that creates a spirit of of, of rejection it, it breeds that expectation in the ground for rejection so that's why it is important that we continue to, to bible says that um let god change us transform us apostle paul says into a new person by changing the way we think so we must grow in our in our mentality we must expand and push the boundaries of our mindsets of what's possible we must grow in a, in a, in a positive thinking so that we can attract the right kind of things in our life so we can get connected to the right kind of things in our life because what bible says what the mind thinks is so is he and so if you think negative you will have negative things in your life if but if you think according to the word of God as apostle Paul says on the things that are good that are noble that are praiseworthy we begin to attract those things into our lives we begin to attract the, the, the blessing and favor of God into our life we begin to attract God's goodness into our life we begin to attract respect and honor into our life we begin to attract noble things into our life the things that are praiseworthy do you see what I'm talking about church if we have, if we're gonna step into the promise and the fullness of our promised land, we must continuously grow mentally. We must continuously to push the boundaries of, of our mental state, of what's possible. Because if you don't think something is possible, you will never attempt of doing that thing. If you never think it's, it's, it's possible for you to own a business, you will never own one. If you think it is impossible for you to go into school and continue with your education to get a higher degree, to get a better position, to get a better influence in your society, then you will never go into that direction. So it is important that we challenge our minds and our mindsets and our way of thinking if we want to possess the promised land of God that He has for us. The second thing that we must increase and like I said, today is going to be very practical. Um, well, I think it's practical. It works for me. Um, is we must increase in knowledge and wisdom. We have to continuously to work to expand our mind. And it almost kind of flows with the first point. But we, uh, first one is, was more about thinking and thoughts of faith mean positive. This one is increasing your knowledge and your wisdom listen to what bible says about it if anyone lacks wisdom um in james 1 5 bible uh, says let let him ask god to give him generously without a reproach and it will be given to him but in proverbs uh solomon says this blessed proverbs 3 uh proverbs chapter 4 verse 13 through 15 blessed are those who find wisdom those who gain understanding for she is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold she is more precious than rubies nothing you desire can compare to her often in proverbs solomon refers to wisdom or understanding as her and he says that you must desire knowledge you must desire wisdom you always what, what that means is you, you always have to be in a hunt for learning new things expanding in the area of what, whatever you uh, 
maybe in the area of expertise, in the area of the business that you're pursuing, in the area of, of, of marriage, in the area of relationships, that you continuously grow in those areas so that you can become knowledgeable. Because knowledge, Bible says, is better than any profit that gold, silver, on rubies or any precious stones can give to you. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 6 through 10 it says, Do not forsake wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. Which is pretty straightforward. You want wisdom? Start getting it. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. Wisdom is not cheap. Wisdom will require discipline and sacrifice and uh, uh, wisdom uh, to get wisdom and knowledge will require paying a price. Uh, whether it's, it's in books, whether it's in materials, whether it's going to some seminars, whether it's taking your time and setting aside to be around the people that can share some wisdom but it will cost you something to get wisdom and understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will give you a garland of grace, a crown of grace your head, uh, for your head and, pres and present you with glorious crown. Uh, uh, glorious crown. So get wisdom and knowledge. Whatever it is, like I said, whether it's in, whether it's in your area of expertise, whether you want to acquire new expertise, you need to increase in knowledge. That means practically going to school, going to college, getting an education. That means reading materials. It means, you know, being curious, finding out what's going on, what's happening in the world, what's happening in the industry that I'm in, what's happening in, in the area that I'm studying. It's, it's constantly, you know, m many people, there's some staggering statistics that saying that people stop learning, stop reading when they get out of school. Most people don't read a book a year and that's an alarming, it's alarming statistic because how can you grow in knowledge, how can you grow in understanding if you forsake reading, if you forsake learning, if you, the last thing that you learn, learned or last thing that went, when you read was in school. We need to Stop focusing on building man caves and stop building libraries in our homes. We need to, in, we need to be a people that, we need to be people that don't only seek entertainment and relaxation, but we pay the price to learn, to acquire wisdom, to acquire knowledge. Because like Solomon said, it will protect you, it will guard you, it will guide you. It will profit you more than silver and gold. It will, it, it will protect your life. And so at any cost, at any time, whatever it means and however it means to you, there are so many resources nowadays. You know, there's things I remember, you know, 10, 10 12 years ago, uh, 10, 12 years ago, there's certain things that I was, um, when I was pr uh, pursuing and learning things about real estate, land development and business and all this stuff, internet was not so developed at that point yet. There's some books, and some things, some, some resources. I paid three, four thousand, five thousand dollars just, just for a particular set of knowledge, you know, books and things like that. And nowadays that I go on the internet, you can Google and you get better stuff for free. If you just take 15, 20, 30 minutes of your time, to uh, uh, just do some digging. Yes, there are, there, there are things that you're going to have to pay money for. That's why, that's why Solomon says that get it at any cost. It's going to cost you. You're going to have to pay for the book. You're going to have to pay for the seminar. Sometimes you're going to have to pay for lunch to take somebody out to get an insight into a thing that you're looking into. Whether it's, whether it's a real estate deal, whether it's a business, whether it's, uh, whether it's pursuing or changing your career. Don't just jump into it because you thought of it or you woke up, woke up one day and you're like, you know what? I think I'm going to become a millionaire but I'm just going to go and take whatever savings I have and dump it into this thing and it's going to all work out. That's, that's not the way it works. God will give you an idea but you're going to have to do your due diligence. Yes. But in order to do your due diligence and to do it right, you have to have knowledge and wisdom in that area. Yes. And so um, 
acquire knowledge at all costs get wisdom get understanding you want to switch a career you know a lot of, oftentimes I remember when I was in school you know people just jumping into a career going to four six year college without doing a proper research without discovering themselves without talking to people that are in that industry and actually finding out what it takes to do it I remember a good friend of mine you know just literally jumped into career of um, being a programmer um, and spent four years and eighty thousand dollars in uh, in school fees and, and uh, for, to paying for schools and actually got a really good job at the, at Hanford or one of the sub there in that area and was making really good money coding programming things and then after six months he quit and I I and I asked him I was like why I mean you spent four years studying for it you spent eighty thousand dollars that you're in debt that you must pay back to the government and you after six months you quit he's like well it's either I'm gonna I was gonna kill myself because I can't handle for uh, working eight hours a day or ten hours a day in a cubicle staring at the screen or I was just gonna quit and do something else I was like well I guess yeah living is better than dead so <laughs> that makes sense but you probably should have done some research prior to that okay you probably should have at least did some job shadowing right you probably should have done some volunteering before jumping to something for four years wasting your life on that and money that's going to take another four to ten years or even more to pay back get wisdom and understanding it will guard you it will protect you and it will guide you so whatever it costs don't jump into things just because it seemed good don't jump into things just because it seemed uh fun at that time you know if it's just if it sounds too good to be true it's too good to be true that's a golden rule of investment it's a golden rule of uh, of doing things it's just that's that's just how it is i have way too many stories on that one but we just don't have time um increase increase in knowledge like James uh, 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 5 says you know start by asking God for wisdom start by asking God for knowledge let God be involved in that area of your life but it's not just going to be God God gave in his principles in the word of God and he expects you to follow them he's not going to override his principle because you felt the Holy Spirit told you to do something okay he's not going to contradict himself you must get familiarized with the word of God with the principles of God you must surround yourself Bible says in a in a council of many there is safety you must surround yourself with the people that are uh, wise people that have expertise in the areas that you want to pursue surround yourself with a good counsel and you will be guided you will be protected and you will be wise you will save on time in your life imagine you know the the, the biggest the, the, one of the greatest assets that you have in your life is time and it's an asset that you can't get back once it's gone it's gone you can't replenish it and so by being by seeking wisdom by seeking knowledge what we do is we're buying time if I can say that you can't buy time obviously but get me right is that you 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 gain time because it will save you from the last time that you will waste on something it will save you from making wrong decisions and, and making wrong turns in life and that you will have to that you lose time there and then time to get back onto the right path yeah. acquire knowledge acquire wisdom at all costs that's the part of possessing your promised land that's how you get to your promised land if you keep on making stupid choices stupid mistakes it will take you longer to get there or might not even get that at all because you'll be discouraged along the way of all the setbacks and failures and and all the other things that you will have to encounter now don't get me wrong there is there are plenty of setbacks and there are plenty of things that you're gonna have to hardships that you're gonna have to encounter on your way to the promised land there's no need to add more to it yeah, acquire knowledge and acquire wisdom third thing that we must increase we must increase in skills and abilities like I said we're talking about practical things today how to possess your promised land how to possess the things that God has promised you you must increase in gifts and abilities Bible says that a man's gift makes the man's gift makes room for him to bring him before the greats another translation says man's gift brings him before the kings man's gift man's ability your ability your gift will bring you 
into your destiny will bring you in front of great people will open the doors that otherwise they will not be open to you you must prepare yourself for the opportunity and when opportunity comes you take up you take chances you seize the opportunity you can't prepare you can't prepare yourself when opportunity is there because when there when opportunity presents itself especially a good one there is a specific window time to the time frame and if you don't take that opportunity it's gone somebody else will take it somebody else will seize it seize the moment so if you want to get into the place where God wants you to be you will have to seize those opportunities yeah. but in order to seize, to seize the opportunity you must be developed in your gift and in your skill in your abilities to see the moment and seize it yeah. what does that mean you must acquire a new skill for those of you that are young here that maybe don't have many skills you say you know what well I don't have skills acquire it how do you acquire it volunteer yes. job shadow that's I that's just as basic and simple as it gets one time I remember this one particular person comes to me and says uh, you know I I'd like to get into I would like to get into construction but I think I kind of like to have a little pull towards it I you know I'm good with my hands and and I said well what can you do and you know he's at this and this and this and I was like well I, you know that's that's a good start but it's not gonna be enough for you to start your own, your own construction business you must know my you have to know a little bit more than that and um, and so a little like a week later I got, an, uh, I got an opportunity that I needed some help over, my, over at my place when I was building uh, my house and I said hey why don't you come over and help and we'll do it together I'll show you how certain things get done well uh, you know I got a gym to go to work out I got some friends to hang out with I was like okay cool yeah, I'll call them next day and say hey uh, I still need help um, yeah, I got a coffee date and uh, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I'm, I'm changing a few details so that I don't, you know, obviously expose the people. But there's not one person here. <laughs> but I'm, spe I'm, I'm speaking from real practical way of possessing your promised land. You can't have a construction business only upon wishful thinking and hoping that somebody's going to hire you and pay you for a subpar skills and pay you a premium price. And that's not the way it works that's not the way you that's not the way you possess a promised land okay so then we had a talk again and I said hey bro you know it's good handy and dandy that you want to pursue this new idea that you got but you're doing absolutely nothing to get there I, I was like well, what, what do you mean you know I was like well I mean I gave you opportunities there are other things you know I, you could have seized on it you know those opportunities but but instead you did useless things you went with entertainment and fun and all this stuff that's not the way it things will work out you gotta grow in this skill if you want to be paid for it yeah. amen? amen come on let me hear from all the construction workers or something. i feel like i'm alone here i'm just giving one example but it applies into every area of your life it applies into computer computer and science engineering it applies in, in, in real estate, it applies in uh, any business. You want to be in it, get in it, but don't expect to be paid for it until your skills are good enough to be paid and compensated for it. Yeah, and just because you work two days in it, it doesn't mean you're ready to be compensated for. Yeah. Take a chill pill, work in it a little bit, okay? <laughs> Grind and then and, and, and kind of... And I'm speaking from experience because this is the, this is the kind of the mindset that new people have. And they come to me, oh... I got this idea you know start business let's partner up you and me right let's do it so what are you bringing to the table um I got a good idea I was like you want to know how many good ideas I have <laughs> that's not that's not the way it works you either bring a bunch of money okay or you bring a bunch of experience and abilities and giftings and talents to it that's uh, don't approach me again unless you have something something good to, the, to bring to the table I'll be nice I'll be I'll talk to you but you know come on let's be real and so that's you know job shadow I remember this uh, this one particular lady from our church um, and um, she came and said you know I feel like pursuing a a career in in, in nursing or something in the hospital I was like well, that's awesome I said what are you gonna do about it well I'm gonna go to school and stuff I was like well that's awesome that's good why don't you just start you know I know uh, because 
I have a few people that are close to me that work in a hospital. I know there's job shadow opportunities, volunteering opportunities. And I said, you know what? That's awesome. Pursue the education. Obviously, you have to have education certification for nursing to, to get it there, to work in that field. But why don't you start now and go volunteer at least once a week? Go with job shadow. Get, get in the system there because when the time comes to hire, they usually hire from within. Yeah. That's how companies work, right? And so, again, guys, I'm... We're talking about practical, real stuff of possessing your land, right? Yeah. And so, and that's exactly what she did. She started volunteering once and then she started volunteering twice a week. And then she shortly, like after, I think about less than three months ago, uh, three, three months into it, she got a job in there yeah. while, while volunteering. While she was going to school, then the hospital paid for her yeah. or, or at least certain portion for her to get certification and eventually in, this, in some short period of time she was practicing in the area that she wanted to practice with short amount of time yeah. shorter amount of time and short amount of uh, money uh, less amount of money that's been spent so get abilities get develop new giftings develop new 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 uh, new skills by volunteering by job showering, by being with people that work in that area and be a person that can bring something practical to the table and until you get good at it, don't expect a compensation. So, um, practice your skill to perfection. Whatever that skill is. Whether maybe you're pursuing a, you know, a, a basketball career, you want to, you know, you, you want to be a pro athlete practice 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 and you if you want to be um, in the air whatever if you want to be if you feel like God is calling you to be in the area of of speaking in the area of, of ministry ministry is not all anointing that's only 10 percent the other part is preparation it's a mental preparation it's it's a it's a, it's a preparation it's an ability to speak and to communicate the Holy Spirit is not going to speak for you He's not going to open your mouth and then all of a sudden, you know, you can't put two words together and then all of a sudden you become this eloquent uh, speaker that communicates the depth, the, the truth and the depths of, of God's heart and then everybody gets touched and stand in the Holy Spirit and then life to change. That, that's, not, that's not the way it works. Okay. An ability to take correction once you speak. As a matter of fact, today, you know, I have a couple of people that were participating here. I said, hey, you know, uh, there's certain things I uh, do this and this next time when you come out and speak. Hey, this actually, Jesus actually didn't say that. It was Joshua that said that. So just the next time, you know, keep in mind. And so um, just, you know, but that's what it takes to grow in it. You come out and you practice it. You get correction. You practice, practice, practice. And next thing you know, two, three, five, ten years down the road, there are mighty men of God. They're moving in a powerful grace and anointing. People's lives getting changed. People are getting impacted. And all over the world, people know who they are. And people listen to them on podcasts, on YouTube, on social media because they're practicing their skill and they're growing in it. You're not going to wake up one morning, come and feel anointed. You're going to come and say, oh, uh, I see somebody's here hurting there and God is healing you right now and then all this stuff. And, and, and you know, I, mean, I see this and that. It takes years of development of your spirit, of your character, of your mental state, of your discipline in speaking and, and, and other things. And then when you step into that and, and God begins to open layer by layer, God begins to open the grace in your life and you step into the fullness of the calling that God has for you. I mean, don't get me wrong is that we constantly improve and grow as we want to and God opens a new territory because the promise that God has for you is literally unlimited it will grow it will you will go as far as you increase you will possess as much as you grow God will give you as many people in your church as much as your heart is stretched and ready to love on them and ready to have mercy and compassion on them that's why you see some people are gifted and talented but they only go so far but they're that's the next point but their heart is too small they're they're not a leader on inside they don't they can't love and be compassionate to people they can't be vulnerable and honest with people and therefore they got limited abilities in their life limited abilities in their ministry limited abilities in their business because as you grow on inside God begins to open new doors in your life God begins to give you more people. God begins to entrust you with more anointing and more power. He begins to open new doors for you. And that's how you step into the fullness of the calling of God that has for you. Is somebody with me? Yeah. I mean, again, we're talking very practically today about possessing your promised land. Next thing that we're talking about is increasing in your character. That's what's leading to you. 
is that character is the foundation of your life. Character is what everything sits upon. We build on character. And the stronger that our character is, the higher we can build. Because it's, it's disaster when somebody's character is flawed. There's no integrity. There's no um, honesty. There is no love, compassion. There is no mercy for people. They don't, there is no hard work in ethics. There is no you know, sacrifice in love then even if God blesses them with this big massive ministry, with this big massive business, their character will destroy it. I know how many people that, how many people that I've met in business, you know, where they had a great, uh, great potential, great business and, uh, and um, but they just not a good leader. They, they're insecure. So the moment a talent in, their, in the company rises and instead of recognizing and, and give him and go ahead to run with it because they're battering your business they were insecure and they put them down or fired them because they were insecure about they needed to be the, the the wisest person in the room they need to be more skilled person in the room and they they cut their business short their their uh, their bottom line short because they were insecure and their the character was flawed and they're staying at this level where God has this for them God even sent people their way but they sabotage their own future because their character is not developing strong. Is somebody with me here today? I know it's not an easy pill to swallow. But this is, this is the truth. Your character determines how far you can go. How far you can conquer. Let me bring you Moses into examples. He's, le he's a leader of a nation of over 3 million people. And, and he's leading them into the promised land. And Moses is like everybody else expecting to be in a, expecting himself to be in a promised land but there are certain things in his in his, his his character he has anger issues that he doesn't deal with the anointing the leadership position kind of covers it but that character fly eventually reveals itself in a very important moment very crucial moment where he was supposed to reveal the glory of God and in that moment instead of revealing the glory of God he reveals his character which was he reveals his character in anger and he cuts his promised land short. He could see the promised land but he couldn't enter it. Character is a foundation for our life. If you have a good character you're gonna have a good marriage. If your marriage is suffering it's because your character is suffering. If you want to have a good family you have to have a good character because the family unit is built on trust it's built on honesty, it's built on transparency, it's been, in, it's been a, a person to be able to come and say I'm sorry I messed up being transparent. Uh, that, that's, that's the foundation of, of the promise and so we can have, we can dream of having this wonderful marriage. This Mr. Right or Mrs. Right and this wonderful children that listen and obey all the time but we ourselves never obeyed. We were rebellious and we didn't deal with those issues. We still have those character flaws. We still, uh, we still uh, you know, get angry. Uh, we still, uh, you know, short-tempered. We discipline in anger and all other things. Well, how do you expect to have a promised land in your family if your own character is cracked? So we have to develop ourselves in order to possess what God has in store for us. It's a challenge to all of us and we've always been perfected. That's why Apostle Paul calls us to be perfect as he is perfect. It's a, it's a, it's a process. We are, we are flawed as human beings and we, were, we are fallen. So we, it's going to be, it's going to be a process. But as God begins to increase, we must be increasing ourselves. Yes. We must be increasing ourselves. We must be growing ourselves in every aspect. Right now, uh, started, broke the ground yesterday. We're building, we're building a house and it has a, uh, it has a uh, daylight basement and it has a, this huge, uh, so we have to build this huge footing and a concrete wall with a whole bunch of rebar in it uh, for, 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 that, for that house. Usually our, our, our footing, our foundation size would be by you know 16 inches by 8 inches deep, right? But for this one they want it 6 feet wide, 2 feet deep, okay? Now that's a drastic change. That's a change 10 times over. Why? Because the weight of the house it's going to be sitting on. And the weight of the ground so that the ground doesn't slide from the upper level into the lower and kill somebody inside in a foundation. Now I 
do agree it's an overkill but still nonetheless it's better be safe than sorry you know you can literally park a tank on, on top of that uh, on top of the house and it will stand but that's the point as our character is like a foundation it must be built well to handle the weight of God's glory and his promise that he has for us Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 9 says whoever walks in integrity walks securely Proverbs 28 6 says better is a poor man who walks in integrity than a rich man who has who has who is crooked in his ways the integrity of the upright guides them but but the crookedness and treachery the treacherous of the treacherous destroys them Proverbs 11 3 it is important for us to pay attention to our character, to grow in our character, to constantly stretch ourselves. When Holy Spirit convicts us and says, you know what, you haven't been patient with your spouse, that we repent and ask God for grace to change. When, 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 uh, when Holy Spirit uh, convicts us or our spouse convicts us either or, um, that says, you know, you've been short tempered with your children. You know, you've been short tempered with your children or you haven't been given enough time that we don't try to excuse and fight it because that's what weak men do. That we, we we excuse our actions but a right but but a, a strong man a mature man a per, mature person says you know what you're right i need to i need to change what can i do to be better when holy spirit convicts us and when we have time in prayer and holy spirit convicts us and say you know what um you talked harshly to that person that's that's not revealing my character that's not revealing my heart you need to be patient you need to see people through the cross i've shown you many times mercy i've shown you many times grace show that to others and then he says yes lord forgive me and you go to that person and say you know what i've spoke harshly against you i shouldn't have i shouldn't have not done that that's growing your character that's expanding your heart when you're if you're in the ministry you want to be in the ministry ministry is not about the microphone it's not about giving word of knowledge and prophesying ministry about having a big heart for people having a lot of mercy for people having a lot of patience for people having a lot of compassion for people and the more the more people you can fit in your heart the more patience you can have for people the more love you can have for people the more people God will give it to you you know I look uh, for for many years I overseen um, our home groups and our, um, our our life groups now and how they're doing just kind of overseeing uh, the whole thing and overseeing the leaders of a home group and I can tell you one thing with a, with a with a high degree of certainty the size of a home group of a person correlated with their character almost I can say 95 percent of the time now there, there's also some practical things but those of you that have been in a leadership position for a long time and those of you that that know how these things run it, almost a hundred percent of the time unless of course you were given by Vlad or Ilya a bunch of people to manage but usually that didn't last too long because it always correlates with how big your heart is how much people you can have love on how much people you can have compassion and mercy towards and how many people you're willing to change to to help change how many people you're willing to help go that means sacrificing on some many times on your end and and and, and helping somebody else at your own expense yeah. But that will determine how much God will entrust you with. That's what ministry is all about. Yes. And last thing, and which is most important, which from all of these things will flow from, is increase in our relationship with God. Without God, all of those things that we talked about, they're meaningless. They will, um, they, they, they will, they will get you to places. They will... Um, they will open certain doors for you because these are the principles of God that we talked about that works whether you believe in God or whether you don't believe God but this one will help you to be satisfied in life having a relationship with God whether you make it here here or never make it you know there's people in third world countries they they have just the same dreams and aspirations as you and I they want to better life for them they want to prosper but due to their circumstances and due sometimes to their economical activities and all other stuff you know they just don't have an ability to, to to prosper like we have in America but if you have God at whatever level you are in life even if you don't make it there where you want it to be you will be satisfied you will be fulfilled look at Abraham God gives Abraham he says look at the stars look at the sand as many this is how many descendants you're gonna have so much such a big promise so many things but Abraham walking with God still yet without a child 
and continues to walk with him and continues to walk with him but Abraham is not stressing out well at one point he did but it was kind of Sarah's fault too but <laughs> my point being is that Abraham Abraham he he was satisfied with God because Bible says he walked with God he walked with God he had a relationship with God and that he he developed his walk with God and developed his his uh, you know his trust in God to that degree that when finally he had a glimpse of the promise one son his own son and God said I want him give it to him that he've grown in his relationship with God so much that he was willing to sacrifice his son because he trusted God so much because he developed his walk and relationship with God so much that he was given he was willing to give up any any notion of, of, of finally receiving his his promised land because he loved God so much and he trusted him and of course God God doesn't want human sacrifice he was just testing his heart and and God blessed him but even Abraham Bible says that he died awaiting his promise but I want to tell you that Abraham died satisfied I'm talking about the promise of, of, of nations, a promise of um, many sons and, and daughters like the stars in the sky and the sand in the sea. He's still waiting for that promise. But because he walked with God, he was satisfied. Because he had a relationship with God, he was fulfilled in life. Because he had an intimacy with God, he walked with God. Israelites on the other hand, Israelites on the other hand came out God brought them out out of the land of slavery of the Egypt and they're walking and God says yes this is my people I brought them out they're my they're my children I want to have closeness with them he says Moses bring him to the mountain I want to speak to them face to face bring him to the mountain and I want to have a relationship I want them to know that they are my children and I am their God he brings the Moses brings them out to the mountain God's glory descends God's God's glory is manifested I mean it's glorious there at the mountain but but the Israelites they said Moses we're too afraid we, we, we don't want to speak to God face to face why don't you go and talk to God and come tell us what he has to say to us and instead of they were on the way to the promised land but instead of cultivating the relationship with God instead of knowing their God instead of instead of you know seeing God face to face they chose to be a bystander and just to sit on the side you know preacher you go talk to God and then on Sunday I'm gonna come and you tell me what God says for me that that only goes as far that only goes far as far as it can go and so instead of being closer to God on their own, instead of knowing God intimately, personally, they, they opt out not to. And God was merciful to them and God was leading them. But because they didn't have that personal encounter with God, they were weak in their faith. They complained, they were mumbling, they were... And eventually they never reached the promised land. The Bible says that until the generation died, except Joshua and Caleb, nobody entered into a promised land. Because Joshua and Caleb they were sitting at the foot of the mountain gazing upon the Lord they were waiting upon God they were waiting for Moses to come down and say you know and, and share what God has for them my encouragement to you is that have a communion with the Holy Spirit fellowship with God because that's what's gonna take you into your promised land that's it's gonna be a wind into your sail and if by God you know if God forbid by some means and somehow you know you don't get there exactly what you want or in the place where you want to be you will be satisfied you will be fulfilled you're gonna have purpose in life you're gonna have meaning in life and and at the end of the day before you close your eyes you're gonna say I'm going home and you will be fulfilled you not you will not be full of regret you will not be full of fears you will not be full of I, I wish I could have done this I wish I could have done that because relationship with God will sustain you through your life I want to encourage you increase in your relationship with God increase in positive thinking and thinking like faith increase in knowledge and wisdom increase in skills abilities increase in character and increase in your relationship with God and God's gonna bless you. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, 
subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.